hey y'all what's up jamie that's me here welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video of and another thing okay welcome back now y'all already know we got into our review for love island usa last night we did go live after the episode it was really really good you feel what i'm saying so um yeah we got into that y'all know i like to go back and rewatch the show and if it's anything that stuck out that i did not catch the first time around girl i'm like and another thing i got something else i want to say okay so we're gonna get into it all right now first of all as I'm re-watching, I see what Catherine is saying as she's talking to the other Costa girls. Janae was pissed. You're so lame and you're so desperate is what it's giving. I feel a way about that because it was giving a whole lot of us e excitement after the fact. But when you were standing up there before everybody, you was looking like a damn fool. You look like you wanted to cry. You look like you were regretting yourself even coming back to the villa. Okay. As much as you so desperately wanted to be there, you looked a damn fool. Like you was gonna cry, and then now you want to run over there to the girls to be so excited. And I won't, I won't forget. I don't think I put it in my notes, but I recall when the ladies were all sitting, sitting around each other, and Daya was talking about not tolerating disrespect or whatever, and how she felt away. And y'all know she said like, you know, when everything was going down, I was like making faces and laughing and this and that waving and then Catherine was finna say something and it seems like she was finna allude to the fact that she was about to say something that night when she was standing next to Kenny and Janae was saying what she was saying and I'm like but of course the day it kept talking so we kind of like made Catherine to be be quiet or whatever and I'm like you wasn't finna do shit understand that you wasn't finna do nothing because you didn't do nothing okay period I feel like that goes for all of you ladies any of y'all that felt like y'all were gonna say something I don't believe that you were, because if you were, you would have. And it's really given that simple. Um, so there's that. Now, Cordell. Cordell did downplay the kisses that him and Daya had when he was having a conversation with Leah. Um, when they were talking, he only mentioned the initial kiss that they had, and then he mentioned the one in the bed. But what Cordell did not do was mention the kiss that they had at the damn pool, okay? He said that, you know, I gave her the initial kiss, and I told her we can't be doing this or something like that. Then, you know, of course, it happened again. You know, I did kiss her again in the bed. But then he didn't mention the one by the pool. And I feel like Cordell is trying to be careful with the things that he says because, again, he needs to know, like Aaron, what did y'all see on that video so that I can only clear up the shit on that video because that may be all that y'all get. Y'all may not get no more, right? But I guess neither one of them know or have not been tuned into Love Island USA before to know or even the uh, or even regular Love Island to know that baby movie night is on its way and whatever you didn't tell whatever you did not you know be honest about or whatever the case is you're about to be aired the fuck out and let me tell you I don't know if Cordell is going to pick Serena or if he's going to pick Daya I'm not sure but what I do know is that I do not want Serena out of this house before movie night so if he decides he's ultimately going to go with Daya fine I just don't want to see um them Daya and him watching movie night without Serena being there like that's gonna defeat the purpose in my personal okay but let me say this too while I'm at it number one y'all make sure y'all liking up the video okay girl because I know you over there you enjoying yourself girl but you have yet to hit that tippity tap the way you tippity tapped on this video so go ahead and slide down and press that button but anywho girl what I want to say is this, okay? And I saw it on Twitter. They was giving us the first look or whatever for the next episode. And what I ended up seeing was um, Miss Daya talking to Cordell. Now, listen, I'm, you know, when she talked to Cordell, let's get this out first. She says, you know, let's just remember I was into you from day one, which she's not lying. She was, okay? I was into you from day one. She says, and I still would be into you even if you were homeless and on the streets, all Daya does for me is confirm what I already thought, what I already knew. Um, Daya tells this man whatever it is he wants to hear. Now, I'm with whatever the f Cordell wants to do. If he goes with Daya, it is what it is. If he goes with Serena, it is what it is. But let's not sit up here and act like Daya don't just be telling that man some shit. Just to be telling him some shit. Because you know e motherfucking well that you would not be interested in this man if he was homeless on the streets. Um, I don't even believe you would have looked this man's way twice, to be honest. So the stuff that she's saying 
leaves me to kind of think that she might be a bit um, just just you know not honest you know but I do feel like this um when it comes to that I feel like all of them got some little liar in them like it is what everybody got a little liar in them um is what I'm saying okay and she's landed on thick because I do believe that she likes Cordell I really do I do believe that she likes Cordell I don't even know if it's about being on the show for Daya I think it's really about winning I think it's about winning the guy for Daya um, and we'll just have to see. Ultimately, the decision is up to Mr. Cordell. I like Cordell. I think he's a great guy. I think he's a stand-up guy. I'm rocking with whatever decision he goes with. If he goes with Serena, that is on him. He's going to have to stand up and be a man and please put down however way he needs to when it comes to their communication and their relationship. If he goes with Daya, okay, that's on him. She's been showing him what it is that he wanted to see. Um, and it is what it is. At least that's how I feel in this particular moment, Okay. Now, let's get to Kendall real quick and Nicole because I kind of glazed over them the other night um, when they went up to Soul Ties to have a conversation and they were over there talking and um, I was just like, you know, whatever, whatever. And I just kind of like moved on by my business. Well, um, they're laughing as they're going upstairs. And I do kind of feel a way about it just a bit because they're laughing, I feel, at everybody else's drama. Like, ha, 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 you know what I'm saying? And he says, yes, so ties, we deserve this. And it's like, you know, y'all really laughing at the drama going on with the other couples for real. Um, so then what else? Kendall says all the guys were in his ear. I don't recall all of the guys being in your fucking ear about you getting to know other women. But I do recall you ironically being in like every guy's ear about how they should get to know other women. I'm feeling some way about Kendall. I don't want him to win this game at all. But then at some parts I felt like shit, I can't even be mad at Kendall because he playing the game. And, and at the end of the day, it's still a game. It's still a lot of money on the damn line. So I get it. But I just thought I'm not rocking with Kendall. I'm not like I, he doesn't have my vote at the end. He just does not. Um, what else? So Nicole tells him about Kane and how Kane tried to kiss her. And then Kendall's like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew all of the guys were going to be all over you. And I'm like, boy, pipe down. What nobody too much done that lady for real, for real. OK, if anybody probably they probably was really on could have been Janae and Kayler. And a piece of live. But pipe down. Anywho, so Cordell, let's get to him. Cordell is saying that he regrets bringing Daya back, okay? Uh, but he's also feeling like if he would not have brought her back, then he would have gotten eight alive if he didn't, if he would have left her there. So then my question, and I feel like, honestly, Cordell may have been in a space where he was heavily going to leave her where she was at. And I think the guys got in his head. So then my question becomes, when you say that you would have gotten ate up, who exactly are you referencing would have ate you up? Are you saying that it was going to be the guys that would have ate you up and say, oh, you're a, see, you're a punk. Like, really, you let her get you like that? Da, 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 da. You think the guys would have gave you the third degree for not bringing Daya back? Or are you saying that your heart would have ate you up or your insides just thinking about it would have ate you up knowing that you didn't even try to give that a chance? That's what I'm wondering because ultimately at the end of the day, regardless of who's trying to influence you, it is your decision to make ultimately. OK, I know sometimes we might need a little help or whatever. You want to go to people and ask them their advice and stuff. But at the end of the day, that's going to be on you, whatever you choose. OK, now Cordell making them breakfast and Kendall says that it was a good he said it was good when Cordell was making breakfast. Um, he told Kendall that he was making breakfast for both of the ladies and Kendall was like, oh, this is good. That's a good step. That's a good step. And I'm like, stop acting, sir. Like you really care when you know that you don't like you are so fake. Kendall is the fakest in this house, okay? I feel like he he just fake. We see Rob for who the hell he is. We see Aaron. But Kendall is like, to me, one of them coworkers that act like they really cool with you. But then, and you may open up to them a little bit, and then they go in and they telling on your ass, okay? About whatever, they spreading your business. Or one of them coworkers that act, may act like, no, you're doing great, you're doing awesome. But then going into the supervisor's office or wherever they're going, and they're saying something completely different. He definitely gives me that. Okay, he gives me that. I don't know what we would call him in the corporate 
you know, arena or whatnot. Y'all let me know what y'all would call those people that do that smile in your face, but then be trying to sabotage you behind the scenes with the rest of the employees or the or the uh, managers or whatever. Let me know what y'all would call those people. All right. Now, when see when it comes to the food, Sierra over here looking at food. Okay, Sierra over here tripping out over food because Miguel ain't bring her nothing. She crying because she feel like he he making food for himself. Everybody else got something to eat, but she didn't. Um, she's like, why would you bring me here only to leave? me you barely spoke to me this that that and the other and can I say that she's making me think about somebody and I don't know who was it that came in the vi Nigel now remember when Nigel got chosen by Liv and then everything was going crazy they just sent somebody home everything was going crazy in the villa and then Nigel was over there going back and forth with Liv because he felt like she regretted her decision or whatever like that and it's like no she didn't Actually, whatever happened had nothing to do with you. That's a little bit of what Sierra is giving me. Just a bit. I know they spent like a week together or whatever, but it's like it is chaos in the house right now. Like every damn boy brought back another BIT except for two of them that we, well, one that we expected wasn't going to bring somebody. Right. But every dude brought back another bitch. It's a lot going on in the house. They and I don't know why y'all came into the villa, only been with these people for not even a full week and got the audacity to feel like you should be shown more attention than the people they've been here with way longer than you. OK, so and even if they may have just coupled up, i.e. Miguel and Leah, I'm sure that they still had some type of, you know, bet closer relationship being that they were existing in the house for however long before you came along. But anyway, um, just doing too much. Sierra over there crying. Then she finds out he about to bring the food and she's like, oh, my God, does my makeup look good? I said, no, girl, you're looking like a ghost in all honesty. I don't know what's going on. I like how you did. You're beautiful. You really didn't even need the makeup. But some of the, the highlight powder you put on your face is, is, is making you look ashier than what you are. Still beautiful, though. Still beautiful. Um, but you could have changed that just a little bit. It was like, oh, no, you're, you look fine. You look fine. But anyway, girl, it was what it was, okay? Um, Miguel. Miguel wants to take – I'm starting to like Miguel a little bit. I don't know if Miguel playing the game because we know he's trying to win the money, but Miguel says – he wants to take a different approach than what he normally does. This explains why he may have barely talked to her. So she says, because see, let me tell you, Catherine did say this. Catherine says that I think that you over there just tripping. Um, I think you're tripping yourself out to find a reason to not like him. So then it makes me question, are you into Kendall? But then they highlighted Kane, so I, I don't know. Like, did you just act like you like Miguel to get over to the villa, possibly? And now you're trying to find reasons to to, to find him at fault, kind of like what uh, Serena was doing in the beginning, finding issues of what's wrong with a person or whatever. So uh, I'm I'm wondering, but I feel like Miguel explained that when he ended up telling the guys, like, I'm trying to take a different approach than what I normally do. I want to get to know these girls on a personal level versus a physical level, okay? And I was like, well, good for you, sir, okay? Good for you for wanting to do all of that and get yourself together, okay? I don't know why this thing isn't working, but anyway. So, Leah, Leah and Miguel do have a conversation. He pulls her. He tells her about kissing Sierra, okay, outside, outside of the challenges, and he asked how can you really get to know the person, you know, and their connections if you don't explore something with somebody else, right? And this is definitely my and another thing because I didn't really touch on this yesterday, but let's get into it. So Leah says that's what I was telling Janae. First of all, the conversation really is about you and him. It's really about you and him. And Sierra and how he's he's trying to let you know that he wants to be open and get to know her, whatever, as well as continuing to get to know you. Just because I brought her back doesn't mean that I'm not interested in you, whatever, whatever. And instead of you focus on that conversation, you bring up Janae. Oh, OK, girl, you keep her on your mind. OK, so Leah says that's what I was telling Janae. Like, it's not the end of the world. Well, why you ain't feel that way when uh, Rob got that bombshell, Andrea? Why you ain't feel like it's not that end of the world? Why you ain't do that then? Um, so then Leah says, that's what I was telling Janae. It's not the end of the world. Miguel says that he understands Janae's side. I'm like, you thought that you saying that to Miguel, you thought you was going to have somebody that was on your side that saw things how you saw it. And now you gagged the hell out because Miguel is like, but no, I get what she's saying, though. 
Yikes. And you're the person that spends the most time with Janae for some reason. Child, I don't know why she, I mean, hell, y'all got this tight relationship. Regardless of what we see as viewers, y'all have a different type of relationship that we may never understand. But anyway, you about spend more time with him, I mean, with her than he does, and he even understands her point. And I have to give it to Miguel because even though Miguel was over there um, telling, you know, telling Cordell, you know, the good things that he's seen about him and Daya, you know, he also said that he understood why Serena was upset. Okay, so I'm going to get him that. He's not totally acting like he doesn't get where the ladies are coming from, okay? So uh, Miguel says that he understands Janae's side because she's been played with left and damn right since she's been in the villa. And Leah's like, no, I've been played with the left and right. And I'm like, yeah, by the same man, dummy. And you allowed that. You allowed that. Janae got played by different men, okay? Um, I'm like, she's frustrated too. You don't think she should be frustrated? Like, why are you sitting up here trying to act like what you went through was worse than what it is that she went through? Are you okay? And that right there, just that little piece right there, I don't know. Like, I don't know, Janae. Like, that's your girl, but I don't know if that should be your girl, girl outside the villa, or maybe she may be a better friend outside of the villa. So I'm like, I don't know. But anywho, girl, um, what else? So then I said, when you knew what you were getting with Rob, okay, that's the thing for me. You knew what you was getting with Rob and you sat up there and you showed your whole ass. But when it came to Janae, Janae has tried to connect with different men and it seems as though those men weren't that interested in her. Then she says she took it all on the chin. Girl, you did not take what all Rob was dishing to you all on the damn chin. You were so bothered by what happened that you made sure the woman he was coupled up with went the f home. That's how pressed and bothered you were. I don't know where taking it on the chin was. Let me tell you where you took it on the chin at, baby. You took it on the chin for me, Leah, when Rob and Liv called you out. And even Kayla was ready to call you out about your involvement in that decision. And you really couldn't say a whole lot of nothing but have a sit-down conversation with Liv. Um, but have a sit-down with Liv and pretty much own up to your BS. That's pretty much, that, that's when you took it on the chin because it was given like, you right. I mean, I did play a role in that. And if the roles are reversed and y'all did what I did, then, you know, I'll be mad too. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? You had to accept that. Yeah, I did that. I did that. Okay. Um, so let's not. That's nice. It's the fact that you literally sitting up here trying to compare your stuff to Janae. So I said, girl, this, this girl crazy. Go ahead on, ma'am. Anywho, so Miguel, this is where everybody got a lot of confused because Miguel had a conversation with Leah about 90 and 10 percent. Leah takes this conversation and conveys it completely different. OK. She can she convey she she lets Serena know something completely different. And um, this to me and I'm going to explain to y'all what Miguel was saying. But the fact that Leah took back a completely different thing than what he said was enough for me to be reminding that she does this all the time. Leah always takes what she wants. Uh, the conversations to be she always takes what it is that she wants and makes it out to be whatever it is that she wants and Rob has called her out on that on more than one occasion but the Leah stands at one point wasn't trying to hear it or see it and now y'all seeing it with this 90 and this 10 percent she made it into what it is that she wanted to make it into and she's been doing this from the beginning so Miguel was trying to communicate to Leah that they only saw a fraction of what was happening in Casa Basically, the video that you guys have received was only 10% of what was going on. The other 90% of what was happening throughout the villa was him just telling her like, yo, hey, you know, I like you. I'm loving the vibe, but I can't forget the connection that I got back, got back there with Serena. It's a strong possibility that I may pick Serena. Would you be okay with that or whatever? And the girl said that she would, all right, or whatever. This is what Miguel was trying to co co relate to uh, Leah. Leah says it wrong again in that moment. And she was like, what? Something about, you know, so he's 90% on Serena versus 10% on her. And it's like, that's not really what he's saying. And you even hear him say, nah. And then they do some type of jump cut. There's something that happens to the editing in that moment. And then it goes to 
Leah, and she's continuing to talk. She was like, I would, I would some, some, some like be over it, whatever it was that she said. But I'm like, that's not what he was telling you. He didn't say that he's 10% uh, Daya and then 90% Serena. No, he's just telling you that y'all only saw 10% of the video and what was happening in the villa when that wasn't happening. Meanwhile, back at the villa for majority of the other time, he was just telling her that he was feeling her. But he's more so, you know, still leaning towards Serena. Because they have history. And if, you know, he chose her, like, how would she feel about that? That's all that he was saying. And she went and twisted that because she always do that. Anywho, later that night, let's get into this and another thing. I went back and watched this Cordell and Serena thing. I'm not fully upset with Serena, like, having her emotional moment. I do think there were things that she could have worked on. And I will tell y'all primarily one thing that really got to me. Or not, it really, like, irritated me. But I will say this, um, her crying, being loud and yelling, I feel like it really ain't no different in my opinion than how Kayla was loud and talking to Aaron, yelling at Aaron. Kayla doesn't, you know, I mean, to me, I feel like it was the same dynamic. Now, the difference is I don't feel like she used her hands or anything. Like, no, she did point. Kayla did do some pointing, but I don't know if she did it, like, in his face. But she was like, the guys, da 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 And she was, you know, she was a little loud, but I feel like um, Kayla and Aaron aren't the hype. At this moment, the hype and what's grabbing the attention of the audience are the, is the triangle. That's what we really more so focused on than them. So when we get to Cordell and Serena, this is my biggest thing with Serena. All right. What pisses me off when they got into it and she went over there and she snapped on him. I don't like how Serena often pushes him away. And I feel like she's been doing that from the beginning. And she might be speaking from a space of rejection or something like that or yelling from a space of rejection or whatever. But you go over there to engage in conversation. Then you run off and he wants you to come back. And then I think you walk off, but then you go back down there and then you're having your words, exchanging your words, not letting him talk. And then you're about to walk off again. And then you kind of turn around to engage. And it's giving this for me. This man is pleading with you and asking you to tell him like what it is, you know, he like he wants to understand, but you're not really allowing that because you're just going off on him. And I understand that you was upset and I was here for it. It's the key. All of that. Right. But as I'm watching it, I'm like, at some point, if this is a person that you have genuinely cared about and I know that they may have done you wrong, I feel like it would have been OK for you to snap on him, go off on him, say what you had to say. But then also get, give him the same space to hear you out the same way that he gave you when you were yelling at him. OK. Um, I feel like if you didn't want to talk to him, you shouldn't have. Serena had already told the people earlier that day that I don't want to talk to him because all I'm going to do is snap on him pretty much. That's what she was already telling everybody. So, no, she was really trying to avoid this moment of what she was doing. But once she got the information from Dale, who I personally feel like was ready to tell her that information, too slick rub it in her face. Too slick brag about the connection that they got and what the other guys were saying and, oh, he really likes me more than he likes you type thing. I don't think she said it to be right like informative you should know about your man but I think that she told her that to possibly rub it in more the same way that she was over there waving and the way she was making faces like hmm you could be mad all you want but I'm here now right so I think that she definitely had a motive when she went and did that but at the end of the day I think Serena I know she that was her breaking point she was upset because she felt played by everybody in the house but then at the same time I probably, I mean, everybody handles stuff different. I feel like Serena is, what, 23, 24 years old? So, to me, she's still young and she's still learning. I know in my 20s, I didn't always handle stuff the best way either, okay? I did. I'm sure I was childish in my communication and things, but it wasn't until I got older where I just get quiet. I don't say nothing because I know me. I'm going to snap and cuss you the fuck out. I'm going to be on your motherfucking hand. I'm not going to let the fuck up. Or I'm just going to, like, I'm good because I realize that, not saying is to me speaks volumes sometimes, you know, so and give me some time when I'm ready to have that conversation with you. You will know you will know. OK, so if I'm real quiet, it's going to speak volumes. They're going to know they did something wrong. They're going to know it's the issue, whatever the case is. But give me some time and I'm going to get with you. I'm going I'm to get with you. Don't you worry. It's just not going to be how I really want to get with you. It's understand. 
So um, I feel like she got some learning to do. I feel like um, Cordell got some learning to do, too, as far as how to be able to be in, you know, I ain't going to say be in control of your emotions. I think that's something that Serena might need to work on more. But as far as him, you know what I'm saying? Not letting nobody, you know what I'm saying? Talk like at least be like, like, calm down. You know what I'm saying? Like, chill out. But if that's not who he is, you know what I'm saying? He's not that type of guy that will yell and scream like. He don't seem like that. You know, even when he gets loud with his voice, he just don't sound loud. Even when he was talking to her and he was loud, he said, I don't mean to yell at you, but that's not me. And I'm like, you really ain't yelling. You loud, but I don't really feel like you yelling, though. Like, you trying. You know, he was trying to, you know. But he's still young. He still, he'll, he'll, he'll grow and he'll learn. She'll grow. She'll learn. I feel like, Dale, you more so closer to 30. So you already know you are you you done got closer to that age of let me just you know you know I I know how to handle this I'm not gonna show my it's not da 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 I done acquired more things in life I got more shit I could lose and whoop the whoop the la 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 so I understand why that why that is your response but I understand Serena was hurt you know and, and be upset and it seems like Cordell was giving her the space to do that like be mad be upset whatever but all I'm asking for is for you to at least talk to me and hear me out too like that's primarily what it was that he wanted from Serena in that moment I just want her to stop pushing him away and if you feel like this is a person that you do care about I know you did all that big talk talking about you done I'm done I'm done I'm done girl you're hurt is what it is and that is okay you're hurt but if you feel like you know I really do care about him and you may want to figure out how y'all can work through this or whatever you gonna have to stop trying to push him away okay if you're gonna sit and have the conversation sit and have the conversation all right don't be walking off and then coming back and don't mind about the girl sit down and deal have the conversation all right um what was funny was that it was a video going around that they put on their Instagram page of Miguel and um Leah, you know, leaning in for a picture. But if you look in between them in the very back, you'll see Cordell and Serena sitting down having a chat. Now, that was interesting because I said, when did this happen? Did this happen after all of the walk around and going crazy? Is that something that we're going to see tonight? Or is that something that you guys edited out? So for everybody that's upset and mad at Serena and going out, and she was disrespectful. And she was this or that. And I hear you and that's how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Everybody experienced life differently. If that's how you feel it was disrespectful, that's on you. If some other folks felt like, nah, she got them where I could care less. Okay? Whatever it is y'all want to do. But what I will say is that at some point there was a sit-down conversation that was had. And I'm just wondering if we're going to get it. In the next episode, or when the hell is we going to get it, okay? Um, so I just want them to uh, get that part together. So y'all let me know y'all thoughts, okay? I know there are quite a few people that are team Serena, and then there are quite a few people that are like, nah, he need to leave her. Her emotional intelligence is super low, and if that was a guy that had did that to a woman, you guys would be going crazy and da-da-da-da-da and all of this other stuff or whatever. So um, y'all, y'all let me know. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts. You are entitled to feel however you feel about this situation. And other people are also entitled to not really agree with you on that. I think it's just about how y'all go about disagreeing, okay? Um, I feel like there's a such thing as a... Uh, a, a positive disagreement, I feel, okay? You could positively disagree. Like, I, I hear you and I get that. However, okay? Um, so it is what it is. I see both sides. I see I see what everybody is saying, okay? So I'm in the middle on this, so I'm just going to stand with Cordell in the middle. And whichever way he decides, because he's being tugged two different ways, we just going to rock with it as it is, okay? So either way, honey. But look, that is all that I have. Thank you guys so much for watching. Just wanted to touch on some other things that I may not have covered in the previous video. All right, so we had to come back with and another thing. All right, go ahead and leave your thoughts and comments down below. I am Jamie, that's me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share my videos, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Jamie, that's me. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. My city and cul de sac. Come and I swing like soldier rat. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gooder, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. 
We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest, but drama, I'm fully oppressed. Yeah. I was ready for years and they died of me. Uh. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. Yeah. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Uh. Cross my mind, I came back with some batteries. Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner.